What's up team? Well, welcome back. It is your biggest fan, The Real Casadero. And in this broadcast, we're going to answer a question that comes from a subscriber. And their question is, what path uses the least math and the least knowledge of programming languages? Cloud architect or cyber security? This question comes from Delane Scott. Now, I will give you the answers based on my experience as a full-time software engineer and cybersecurity professional. I have not used a lot of mathematics overtly. And when I say this, what this means is there has not been any situations that I've come across where I've had to say, for instance, understand some sort of mathematical equation or product and have to turn that into code or vice versa. Now, I have seen instances where this has been an efficient way to reason about some sort of process that needs to be performed over and over again. And inside of that process, perhaps there's decisions that need to be made based on the answers that are produced, which lead to the software application taking a different path uh, based on the result of a previous input or question that was asked of the software. So outwardly, no, uh, neither one of these things seem to require extensive mathematical knowledge, but mathematical knowledge does make understanding software and some processes that are involved in cloud architecture and cybersecurity somewhat easier to reason about because of the nature of what needs to be done in these cases. Software, as it is observable now, is data intensive, meaning if you're working in cybersecurity, you're monitoring systems that produce a lot of information by way of logs. You need a way to parse these logs. Depending on where you're working inside of the technology stack, for instance, if you are an engineer who is building software that is going to ingest and read logs and then execute some sort of action based on what information is in those logs, then at some point, mathematics may be involved because you're going to have to calculate how much data you have how many files you have how long it's going to take to process all these files how fast the algorithms that process each file runs are you going to use multi-threading or are you going to use single threading can you use multi-threading or single threading what is the cost going to be if you try to implement your architecture on AWS Everything on AWS comes with some sort of cost. Everything in Azure comes with some sort of cost. Everything in DigitalOcean comes with some sort of cost. Every cloud computing service out there has cost involved. And that cost will be passed on to you as you perform operations on that particular system or platform. So mathematics, the ability to reason about how much data you're going to be processing over a given period of time and the mechanisms you're going to use to process that data and what the cost of each of those mechanisms are and what they're going to be in aggregate from perhaps day to day or week to week or month to month or year to year it depends on where you work if you work maybe you're the business owner maybe you're the chief technical officer maybe you're thinking about some sort of startup or something like that, mathematics at some point will be involved, even if it's just addition and subtraction. But in most cases, it has been my experience that in programming, the one body of knowledge in mathematics that can be uh, directly correlated to say, for instance, software engineering and cloud computing can be correlated to software engineering as well in the sense that in order to orchestrate some sort of cloud application, you have to most likely interact with 
the software and services that are available to you in the cloud via some sort of application programming interface. So there is quite a bit involved. Now, here at this juncture, I would like to touch on why this question was asked in the first place. It seems to me that there is a quite a bit of fear around mathematics for a number of reasons. I believe it is mainly because the mathematics that we are taught in school is unintuitive because it has been, for lack of a better term, or for lack of a better term that is coming to me now, molested for a number of reasons. Now, we have a system here, and when I say system, I'm talking about modern society and the way we go about things, where, wherein as... The system is contrived, it's fictitious. All of the things we see around us were made by man. And so when I say fictitious, I mean that these are manifestations of the mind. And there were processes that were taken in order to arrive at, say, for instance, this computer we see here, or the television behind it, or the stack of books, or the cup of coffee, the clipboards, the whiteboards, the wall, the paint on the wall, the desk that all this stuff you're seeing is sitting on. These are all things that sprung forth from the imagination based on a commonly shared system of thought, not necessarily a true system of thought, not necessarily an intuitive system of thought. And because these things are not directly intuited from nature without an extensive amount of thought, then they are hard or difficult to understand and or comprehend because of the level of complexity. And again, the fact that these are derived things. So what I would say is that do not fear the mathematics. The mathematics, as we know it, that we use in these systems, in our software systems, our IT systems, our computer systems, these mathematics are contrived by men based on true mathematics. But nonetheless, there's a lot of controversy that is in these mechanisms. And what happens is, because these things are deemed to be difficult, because we aren't primed with this knowledge before beginning this process, or maybe we are, but we're just too young to understand. And by the time we are able to understand we have become so disillusioned with what mathematics is that we don't even consider that perhaps we just did not have the prerequisite knowledge understanding or what I believe is the most essential the faith the belief in ourselves a belief that comes from an understanding that all that we see was thought up by a mind that is no greater than our own. And with that being said, there's nothing we cannot do. We should not fear the math. In fact, if we do fear the math, we should seek it out. And we should seek it out every day. And we should seek to learn it. And what should we seek? We should seek to understand those things that we don't understand. And how do we understand the things that we don't understand? We start small and we build momentum one concept and then another concept on top of that for instance in mathematics we can start with addition and then from there we can understand subtraction and if we understand addition and subtraction then we can understand multiplication which is just a more not even more it is a complex form of addition and if we can understand this complex form of addition known as multiplication then we can understand the complex form of subtraction known as division. Division and multiplication, they go together just the same as addition and subtraction. And once we understand these four core principles, the monads of mathematics that are displayable and observable in the physical world through our own experience, that we are able to manipulate, we can pick up two rocks and know that these are two rocks. We can see there's a rock, there's a rock. We, we don't even have to have a number or a representation 
for what more than one looks like, we can see what it looks like. And we know if we take one away, we're only left with one. And if we add one back, then we have two again. And if we add two more, then we have four. This is multiplication. And if we divide those by two, then we have two and two. And from there, we can go into algebra where we begin to substitute actual numbers with things like letters. And then we can say, OK, we want to perform this equation X amount of times. We want to perform this problem X amount of times. And each time we're going to take this answer, we're going to do another thing. This is all programming. That's what programming is. We're going to do this thing once, get an answer, and then we're going to use that answer to do another thing and get another answer. Use that answer to do another thing. The core principle, the core fundamental of mathematics, let's say if we take addition, for instance, I have this one thing, and if I add one more thing to it, I will have two things. And if I add one more thing to that, I will have three. And if I add one more thing to that, I will have four. This is mathematics. That is a simple algorithm for adding objects together. That is where we start with the simplicity, with deep thought in the silence about these things. And as we become at ease with these concepts as we should have been taught in whatever educational system we participated in as we grew up if we participated in any at all is that when we become comfortable with comfort comfortable when we have ease with the concept then we can construct something else on top of it so we have this foundation so I would say don't fear the math don't fear anything Make a choice, have some faith, and then go down that path. Whatever it is you want to pursue, don't worry about the things inside of that. As the knowledge is required, the knowledge will come to you. It will be delivered unto you as, as you ask the questions and you knock on the necessary doors. And if you build momentum while doing this, you'll be amazed at how much you will know, how much you will be able to do, and the person you will be a month from now, three months from now, six months from now, nine months from now, a year from now. It's all momentum in facing our fears with the faith of a mustard seed and moving forward in taking small actions while we build personal power that eventually will result in us taking bigger and bigger actions and on that note team i'm your biggest fan the real casadero thanks for hanging out with me here i appreciate you for hanging out with me here in this broadcast if you found this information useful if you believe it's going to help you along your path i implore you to share this with someone else by way of subscribing to the channel hitting the thumbs up button and leaving a comment what's going to happen is the algorithm that youtube uses or whatever platform you see this video on is going to direct this to other individuals now what happens is is when individuals look at these broadcasts the creators are given a piece of the revenue so by you doing these things you are giving and that is the one secret in this place that is overlooked and that is give and you shall receive and the law is you will receive four times more than you give so i appreciate you for asking this question I'm looking for your name right now. Daniel Scott, I appreciate you for asking this question because just by asking, you have given the YouTube community, other subscribers to this channel, and the whole wide world knowledge and information that we all believe will be valuable. Until next time, team, I'm your biggest fan, The Real Casadero, and I look forward to seeing you in the next broadcast, team.